Studio Marpa fix and correct some issues in one of their most controversial episodes. Yo, what's good? It's the boy to the views and heavy spoilers for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 8, as well as flashing images in this episode. You have been warned. So, this marks the end of Volume 1 of the Shibuya Incident Arc Blu ray set, as next month we'll be getting the next batch of episodes. But let's get on to this comparison. When this episode was initially broadcasted, it caused quite a stir online with people complaining about the ghosting and dimming. I think this was the origin of when people were really hating on the ghosting and dimming effect because it was really apparent. Let's read some of the negative feedback from a couple of months ago. What is the dimming and ghosting? It's even worse than last episode. Looks like a video game. That looks so arse. Maybe they are just saving the budget for the later parts of Shibuya. What is going on at Marpa? Bruh, the first season looked alright. Toei Animation R episode. Ghosting aside, it feels like such an awkward pacing. At least this is a low priority episode slash moment, but two episodes in a row is wild. Animation is mediocre enough, the ghosting just adds salt to the wound. All I'm saying, season 1 animation was better. Season 1 would never make this abomination. They called me a madman when I said the quality of production during hidden inventory looked sh compared to season 1, now look how far it's fallen. They really fumbled the bag when season 1 director left. His fight scenes are next level, every fight from season 1 were top tier. Weakest episode in the season and understandably so, the content is not the best either, timing in the comedic scenes were off, weak storyboards, limited animation, ghosting demon makes it even worse but next week will be a big one. Ghosting in season 2 has absolutely been dreadful so far. You can't even tell what's happening sometimes. Today's JJK episode wasn't good. Grasshopper Curse fight was poorly edited and storyboard and the dimming and ghosting didn't help either. The stuff at the end with Goja looked good but it wasn't enough to save it. JJK? More like Danny Phantom with all that ghosting, am I right guys? People literally pay to watch this and yet it's unwatchable. We are in for a long season, please do something about the ghosting and dimming. Definitely the worst episode of JJK so far. It's really just been meh with some good cuts here and there, storyboard is basic, action especially suffers, clearly low priority and next episode should be good. Also, screw the ghosting. What's well, gonna start season 2 today but what on earth is this? Just stick to One Piece. Never in a hundred years I'd have thought my Shibuya anime experience would be ruined by Crunchyroll. Lazy A not negotiating getting the original non-ghosting and undimmed version from Toei since the JP law doesn't apply to streaming services at all. So yeah, those were all the major complaints and comments made by people on X. When this episode was initially released on September the 15th, while I didn't really mind it at the time, on rewatch it doesn't look that good. But did they remove it? Is it fixed? The answer is yes. Hopefully with all the dimming and ghosting removed, this will be enough to satisfy the fans. The fight sequences before Itadori and the grasshopper curse spirit punching one another doesn't have any major changes so far. The changes only happen when Itadori and the grasshopper clash. First up the scene of the grasshopper looking at Itadori in shock and awe while telling the dude he's clever has all the dimming removed. But the main changes come from the main clash between Itadori Yuji and the Grasshopper Cursed Spirit when they engage in Taijutsu. This is the moment where a lot of people were complaining about. I will admit that the scene isn't necessarily too bright in the TV version or the Blu-ray so having that dimming and ghosting was a little unnecessary at times. But honestly, I get it because those flashing scenes of the two characters clashing do look really bright in the Blu-ray now that the dimming is all removed. It's mainly with the special effects and light particles that flicker from the two characters clashing that do contribute into the fact that this episode was dimmed. Those light effects really would have hurt your eyes if you saw this in the dark. And the art really does shine when the dimming and ghosting aren't covering it and blurring it, which is a huge plus. Although it's a shame that this Blu-ray set doesn't have any English subtitles available. But while the main dimming and ghosting have been removed in the main fight between Itadori Yuji and the Grasshopper Curse Spirit, the last few changes come to towards the end of the episode. It's the sequence where Hanami, Jogo and Chozo all confront Gojo. It's the sequence of Hanami running. All of the dimming and ghosting have been removed in this sequence. But that's it, those are all the major changes so far. All the other scenes you see in this episode don't seem to have any changes or corrections to them. But seeing the amount of dimming and ghosting removed in these two episodes, it's just made me wonder in the next volume that we're going to get next month. I do wonder what other changes will be made to some of the battle scenes. Those are all the major changes 
changes from TV to Blu-ray. With it being a Blu-ray, there is less compression, so all the dark scenes don't look fuzzy. You may have to wait a couple of months for the English version to release in the US. But tell me in the comments down below, what do you guys think of these changes? Like this video, subscribe for more JJK TV vs Blu-ray comparisons, as well as other anime updates and all that jazz. Thank you for watching, and as always, a boy do the view, sunny out.